Hi everyone, welcome back to Tentacent. Today we are here with a new video on the topic calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. Odonto means tooth, genic means forming. Because it forms from tooth forming tissues, it is known as odontogenic tumor. Similar to its friend ameloblastoma, which is also an odontogenic tumor. In this video, we are going to discuss introduction, origin, clinical features, radiographic features, histopathological features, treatment, and prognosis of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor, which can come as a long question for you. When we motivate someone, it brings out the best in them. So do motivate us by liking and commenting on our videos so that we can create more such useful content for you and don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new new videos what calcifying says that this tumor has a lot of calcifications which can be seen under the microscope histopathologically and the word epithelial says it arises from odontogenic epithelium so it is a benign epithelial odontogenic tumor some odontogenic tumors come from odontogenic epithelium others from mesenchyme and others can come from both so in this classification of odontogenic tumors calcifying epithelial odontogenic odontogenic tumor is in the first category that is it arises from odontogenic epithelium similar to its friend ameloblastoma jens j pinburg in the year 1956 described this tumor so from there it got its other name that is pinburg's tumor very very important by our question and sometimes you can get your long question by the name pinburg's tumor alternatively it can be abbreviated as ceot c is calcifying e is epithelial o is odontogenic and t is tumor so that is your important entrance and by our question now, this tumor comprises less than 1% of all the odontogenic tumors. If we talk about the origin, now most cases are seen in association with unerupted or impacted tooth. So, Pinberg originally suggested that this tumor may arise from reduced enamel epithelium. But today, it is believed that it arises from a layer inside the enamel organ, which is present between the inner enamel epithelial cells and the stelate reticulum cells. Yes, you got it correctly. This layer of flat cells is known as stratum intermedium. That is your important by Question. It is said so because the tumor cells morphologically resemble, that means they look similar to the cells of the stratum intermedium layer of the enamel organ, which is present between stelate reticulum and inner enamel epithelium. So, that is your important entrance and BIPA question. Other authors also believe that it can arise from the remnants of the dental lamina, that is, because based on its anatomic distribution within the jaws, that is, this tumor can be seen in the areas where we can find remnants of dental lamina. So, the two important the most important is stratum intermedium and second can be remnants of dental lamina. So if we talk about clinical features, it occurs over a wide age range. Most cases are seen between 30 to 50 years. Mean age is 40 years. Males and females are equally affected. And if we talk about the site, mandible is affected more than maxilla in the ratio of 2 is to 1. And it is also seen that molar region is affected three times more commonly than the bicuspid or the premolar region. So two-thirds of the cases occur in the posterior mandible. So, posterior mandible is the most common site. So, in terms of age and site, it resembles its friend ameloblastoma. Now, we talk about clinical presentation. It presents as asymptomatic, painless, slowly growing swelling, which can cause cortical expansion. And on palpation, it can present as a hard tumor with well defined borders or diffuse borders. And 52% of the cases are seen in association with unerupted or impacted tooth. So yes, there it can resemble dentigerosis. We can also see peripheral CEOT that is present in the gingiva, in the soft tissues, which is also known as extraosseous outside the bone. It occurs at the mean age of 35 years and males and females are equally affected. But for this peripheral CEOT, the most common site is anterior gingiva, anterior gingiva, which is in contrast to intraosseous CEOT for which the most common site is posterior mandible. This presents as a non-specific sessile gingival mass. Sessile means it is directly attached over the gingiva and clinical it can resemble other tumors on gingiva like fibroma and peripheral giant cell granuloma. If we talk about the radiographic features, it presents with considerable radiographic variation. That means we can see different pictures on radiograph. So either it can present as a unilocular radiolucency or which can be well defined, the borders of which can be well defined or it can be diffused or it can present as a mixed radiolucent radiopaque appearance. That is within the radiolucency irregular trabeculae can divide it into compartments and then it give a multilocular radiolucency appearance and it is termed honeycomb pattern. The margins of this radiolucency are often scalloped like this. So scalloped margins can be seen. Now calcifications which are an important component of this tumor are seen within the radiolucency as scattered flecks. So these scattered flecks of calcifications have been given a descriptive term 
and it is known as driven snow appearance very very important by our question driven snow because it looks like as if the snow is carried away by wind into the drifts and these calcifications which are of variable size and density they are most prominent around the crown of the unerupted tube which in most cases is molar now this tumor can also cause tipping of the teeth it can also cause rotation of the teeth it can also cause migration of the teeth and the mobility of the teeth secondary to resorption because it can cause resorption of the roots of the teeth so it can cause the loosening of the teeth this tumor can also be seen on ct scan where we can see a mass causing buccolingual cortical plate expansion and we can see radiopaque areas of variable sizes and signal intensity so driven snow appearance is very very important by why and entrance question now if the radiolucency it presents as a mixed radiolucent radiopaque appearance then it can resemble adenomatoid odontogenic tumor calcifying odontogenic cyst amyloblastic fibrodontoma and odontoma but if it is the complete radiolucency and it is present near the unerupted tooth yes then it can resemble dentigerous cyst now the peripheral ceot which is present in the gingiva can sometimes cause superficial erosion of the bone so bone can be eroded and the term for this type of superficial erosion of bone is cupped out erosion now we come to the histopathology of this tumor that is how it appears under a microscope now it is an epithelial tumor so epithelial cells are the main component of this tumor so these epithelial cells the shape of these epithelial cells is polyhedral very very important point and these epithelial cells are lying in the large closely packed sheets so they appear in sheets or they may be lying in islands like this in a group of cells now the connective tissue in between these cells is bland fibrous connective tissue and it is scanty that is very less so we can see bland fibrous connective tissue but the main component is the epithelial cells so let's see these epithelial cells these epithelial cells have well outlined borders that is borders of the cells are very clear we can make out the borders and if we talk about the cytoplasm it is pink eosinophilic pink staining cytoplasm then within the cytoplasm if we talk about the nucleus nucleus are hyper chromatic hyper means more chroma means color so we have dark staining nuclei these nuclei can be pleomorphic that means they may be of different sizes and shapes in the cells and sometimes they can be very giant like this sometimes we can see multinucleation that is more than one nucleus can be seen in the in one cell so because of these nuclear features histopathologically sometimes it can mimic malignancy it can look like a malignant tumor but it is not a malignant tumor it is a benign tumor and the intercellular bridges between the cells are very very prominent that is the junctions between these cells are very very prominent like this now sometimes these cells they do not present with eosinophilic cytoplasm but a clear vacuole cytoplasm with the nucleus which is round to oval lying in the center or be against the membrane and then it is called the clear cell variant of ceot now characteristic important feature of this tumor is that in between the tumor cells sometimes a material is seen which is eosinophilic amorphous homogeneous highly in material so it has been studied extensively ki hai kya so it has been investigated that it could look like amyloid it could be basal lamina it could be enamel matrix or it could be keratin or it could be glycoprotein or it could be type 4 collagen but with the various studies it has been said that it looks like amyloid so it is considered as amyloid like material very very important by our question and it stains like amyloid that means it can stain with crystal violet metachromatically and can be seen under light microscope it can stain with congo red positively and when this slide is subjected to polarizing microscope we can see apple green birefringence that can be your important entrance question apple green birefringence and under uv light with thioflavin t it can fluoresce and can be seen under the fluorescent microscope so those are the stains for amyloid and this material stains similarly to amyloid and that is your important viva question now this material is produced within the cells intracellularly and can be then secreted outside into the extracellular compartment this material can be in small amounts or it can be in large quantities then characteristic another feature is calcifications as that is in its name so these calcifications are ring like calcifications and they are called lees gang ring calcifications so these concentric ring calcifications can form within the globules of amyloid and they can fuse together like this to form large masses so that can make a very important or characteristic component is of this tumor that is large masses of these concentric ring calcifications so these three are the important histopath points that is polyhedral epithelial cells amyloid like material 
and leaves gangrene calcifications. Now we come to the treatment and prognosis. Originally, it was thought that it behaves like amyloblastoma, but with accumulating evidence, it is shown that it is less aggressive. So various treatment modalities can have been used. That is, if the tumor is small, then we can do enucleation with the judicious removal of the adjacent bony margins, or we can also do curettage, but a recurrence has been seen with curettage. And if it is large, and if it is that is more than 4 cm, then we can do segmental resection. That is, that segment of mandible can be removed. But if it is quite extensive, then we have to do hemimaxillectomy or hemimandibulectomy in which case we have to remove half of the mandible now in that case a large defect will be created so that defect can be later reconstructed through reconstructive procedures with the help of plates or with the help of grafts and it is said that maxillary tumors should be treated more aggressively now, with the local conservative removal, a recurrence rate of 10 to 20 percent has been observed. But overall prognosis of this tumor is good, though malignant transformation can be seen, but that is very, very rare. Now we come to the summary of this tumor. So it is a benign epithelial odontogenic tumor similar to amyloblastoma. Other names are Pinberg's tumor or CEOT. Origin is from stratum intermedium. Very, very important viva question. Or also from the remnants of dental lamina. Then 40 years of age is the mean age. Males and females equally affected. Most common site is posterior mandible similar to amyloblastoma. Clinically, it is asymptomatic. Mass, slowly growing mass. And we can also see peripheral CEOT. Radiographically, it can be unilocular radiolucency and it, when it is a complete radiolucency near unerupted tooth it resembles dentigiosis or it can be multilocular radiolucency now important radiographic term for the scattered flex of calcifications is driven snow appearance very very important viva question now it is ceot so the epithelial component is main component so in histopathology we see polyhedral epithelial cells which lie in sheets and two characteristic features are amyloid like material and these gangrene calcifications treatment if it is a small we have to do enucleation or curettage and if it is large then we can do segmental resection so that is all for ceo so if you really enjoyed the video you really understood everything do give a thumbs up keep reading keep studying and good luck for your exams see you in the next video till then take care bye bye